All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Capsule Corp Exploration Moon Village, which is being made by forum user Gabu. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build your own ESA concept moon base and that is pretty awesome so let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what all this does add in so let's of course uh grab ourselves a mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison's sake and then turn on our janitor's closet mod filter just leaving on capsule corp and i should point out as you can see here i do have the kerbal inventory system and the kerbal attachment system installed as this moon base mod is very much meant to be used in conjunction with them to help you connect up all the parts of your bases. Now, technically, you could use it without these, but it is highly recommended that you keep them. So let us start with our first part here, which actually isn't moon base related. It is simply an Altair lander. Now, we've actually seen a couple of these in various mods, and this one includes its own lander as well and as you can see here it is uh, well at least the lander pod quite a nice looking model and texture a little bit simplistic compared to some of the others that we've seen but overall very nice looking and as for the stats on it it requires at least one crew member to operate but can hold up to eight it does have its own built-in data transmitter rcs reaction wheel crew report as per usual 650 electric charge 222.8 liquid fuel 200 motor propellant and 272.3 oxidizer and uh yeah overall a very good looking little lander body with of course an attachment point on the top and on the bottom the one on the top is meant for a uh a docking port we'll get to in a little bit and of course the bottom one for an engine now in fuel tanks we do have the big boy descent fuel tank which of course is the actual i guess you'd call it lander bit as this is what will bring you down to whatever planetary body you're on and hey there we go we'll just snugly fit it around the mark 1-2 and yes after you attach the engine to the bottom of the main altair lander you then slot on this section under that and you'll be good to go now on the stats for this it does of course have its own built-in decoupler 720 liquid fuel 100 mono propellant 800 180 oxidizer and of course has some built-in lander legs for your convenience and a very handy system of ladders for you to safely get your crew out of the lander here and onto whatever planetary body you're on. Overall, a very, very cool thing. Now, on the engines, we have two of them in here, the CCRL-10 Mini and the CCRL-10. Now, this is the larger one meant to go on the bottom of the main lander bit right here and then of course as i said this would then slot under that and its stats here are a max thrust of 220 kilonewtons in vacuum isp max of 455 and of course burning liquid fuel and oxidizer does have four degrees of gimbling range now the mini version of it has a maximum of 70 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum 415 on the isp again liquid fuel and oxidizer and four degrees of vectoring and this, of course, goes in four attachment points right on the bottom here for your convenience. And there we go. God, I did not attach that one correctly. But oh well, you, you get the point. Overall, a very, very good set of parts. Now, we then have in command and control some RCS ports to help go along the side of this thing, of course. Which, of course, we do have the built-in ones on this section. But then you can slap some of these on the bottom section to help give you a little bit more control. And actually, I'm going to skip to coupling here as we can get everything out of the way with the Altair Lander with the CC docking port, which just goes right on the top there and is an extendable docking port with a convenient little light. And uh, overall, yeah, very nice. So that is everything to create the Altair Lander that is a part of this mod. And uh, yeah, very useful, of course, for then of getting down to your moon base.
Now we did have a piece here in structural, if I just check all of these things off now, which is an ESA CC HAB external door. And I'm honest, I'm, I'm gonna be honest here, I have no idea where this goes. I have not been able to find any part where this would attach into your habitat modules. I, I'm So I'm not entirely sure if this is a remnant part of uh, an old beta version, but yes, there is an external door. Now these doors do of course match up with the doors for the habitats we'll look at here in a moment. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm not sure where these go. I I've been, you know, playing around with this for quite a while now and I've yet to figure it out. If any of you know, please do tell me in the comments. Now, uh, then into payload, we have nothing, aerodynamics, nothing, ground, nothing, thermal, nothing, but in electrical, we do have the HAB ground solar panels, which as you can see here are a pretty a nice little, uh, I'm trying to think of what the term, proper term for this type of polygon is, and I'm completely blanking. But yes, a lovely little shell that we can open up to extend out the solar panels, and like I said, this is meant to be used with the uh, Kerbal attachment and Kerbal inventory systems, and so kind of the idea is for you to plop one of these down on the surface, then connect it with one of the pipe connectors back to your habitat. And overall, a just, you know, very good little solar panel, very nice, and you can see here overall there are four solar panels making up this entire body, each one producing up to 57.3 electric charge per second. Very good. Now we have nothing in communication, and then four things in science, and these are sort of the primary things. These are the habitats for your actual construction of a base. And uh, let's just plop one of these on here real quick and kind of place it like that just to show the size comparison because, well, we're actually gonna have to put it on its side to show this thing off properly. And overall, a very good little model, again, basic, but the idea of this thing is that it inflates and you know me i love inflatable habitats and so this is a pretty cool bit so i'm actually going to hit new here so that we can just start off with one of these and we have four different habitats though really honestly only three this one right here the hab workshop is meant to basically be a uh, sort of ground base uh, a uh, i guess hangar or garage sort of a thing as you can see just a large open area in here now it is unmanned so it does work as an unmanned command pod it does allow you because it actually does hold four kerbals somehow inside of this thing it uh, will allow you to level up your kerbals in this thing and it does also have curb net access reaction wheel and 2000 electric charge but overall its sort of main purpose is you know a garage for your rovers now the actual habitat bits like this one we have three a greenhouse a science laboratory and a mining facility now the greenhouse here again is an unmanned command pod with a maximum crew capacity of four uh, again, it does allow you to increase the levels of your Kerbals without returning to the Kerbal Space Center, has that curb net access, has of course a lot of Kerbal inventory space of 2,500 liters. It uh, does also have a built-in reaction wheel and electric charge, and this one really doesn't serve much of an actual greenhouse purpose as I don't believe it is compatible with any of the different uh, life support mods, at least at the moment. Hope uh, Hopefully that will come in the future. But for now, that's what you get. And if we actually do inflate this thing, this particular one, being a greenhouse, has a large sort of cupola opening up at the top, and inside is actually a full interior that you can walk around. You're not actually just sitting in here with a Kerbal in a chair. You can actually go into the airlock down here and walk in, which is what I really, really love about these parts. So if we actually open up the airlock, the outer door opens. Now you walk your Kerbal in, and then when you uh, close the airlock, the internal door opens, actually sort of functioning as a proper airlock. As you can see, the internal door is open there, and then you just waltz right in to enjoy all the space, which is pretty awesome. Now we then, of course, have, if we just do another new one there 
the Science Habitat, which this one will hold six Kerbals rather than four. It is an unmanned command pod, again allows you to level, has 4,000 liters of inventory space for the Kerbal inventory system, reaction wheel. It is also, of course, a functioning science lab, and then 1,350 electric charge. Now, if we inflate this one, it is a little bit different, as you can see, not the large cupola opening. Instead, we have three smaller ones, but again, you can enter inside of this facility where you got telescopes and experiments, etc. It is overall very, very cool. I like it. Now, then, if we hit new again, we then go to the final one, the mining facility, which, again, if we inflate, this one is just like the last one with the three smaller cupolas. Again, it will hold six Kerbals, is an unmanned command pod, curved and access, 3,000 inventory space, reaction wheel. It is a functioning resource harvester. It will collect ore for you and then holds a 4,200 electric charge and up to 1,500 ore, which is awesome. And again, you can go inside of this thing where you have a full little industrial facility, which is pretty cool. And then if we go down to utility, we have the last two things here because we're not quite done yet. You will notice we have a little awkward attachment node right down here, and that is specifically for these two parts. Now, the idea for the ESA concept moon base in the real world is to make one of these habitats and then cover it up with lun lunar regolith is the proper terminology there and that is what this does you attach it there to that point and then hit cover and it will cover the whole thing in lunar regolith and we have two versions of this one for the three cupola versions and then this one here which is for the large cupola as you can see it uh, <laughs> has quite a big hole in there and it's just it's wonderful. I really like having that. It's it's just a fun little addition. So let's actually take a look at these out in the world. And let's go take a look first at uh, over here on the runway. I didn't actually go and build this on the moon because, well, frankly, I was having a hard enough time building it on the runway just because it's been so long since I've played with the Kerbal inventory system. But here we are in a crappy little base that I made. And how it always seems to pop in covered, even though I don't want it to be. So we'll uncover this one and as you can see when we're out in the real world we have a full animation. A little arm comes up and uh <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of vacuuming away all of the lunar regolith right now, but uh, it basically it's meant to do that in reverse to actually cover it all. So let's see uh, one of these things properly inflating. So I can inflate this from the outside and deploy this baby. Now oh, it actually might be uh, deflated. There we go. Inflate habitat. Yeah, with inflating and deflating coming back and forth in the save file <laughs> I keep getting confused with it. But there we go. It does inflate nicely there. And then we simply hit cover it up. That arm will come out. I kind of need to move out of the way. And uh, it will start covering it up with the lunar dirt. Now, it would be cool if it could tell what planet you're on to sort of change the color. Who knows if that's possible. But for right now, at least, it will just always be gray. And I mean, it is meant for the moon. So, you yeah, know. Now. And let's actually head into this one. So let's open up the airlock. This is the mining facility. The door is a bit slow, but overall, excellent. There we go. And we simply close the airlock now. And the interior door opens. And haha, we have made it inside where we have this cool industrial section. And you'll see these doors here. These are the actual crew hatches for any crew you have in here. So we can get Kurgle or Lisbeth Kerman out from their current homes. Now, unfortunately, there is no interior view for these rooms. Uh, so they are just out there in the ether. But that is what these doors along the side are for. They are crew hatches for you to put Kerbals in and out, which as you can see, we can board here if I hit B. But let's actually head over to this ladder, which if we get close, we can grab onto to go up to the second floor, 
where we have the full little cool industrial facility. And there we are. We've just got this cool little place. And as I said, it is a functioning, you know, mine. It will drill. We can, you know, get ore for our projects on the moon, which is always cool. So let's actually head out of this one and head over to the next habitat to show off the interior. There we go. Let's open up the airlock again and out we go exterior door opens and let's just run over to this one the greenhouse one which the door is already nicely open so i simply have to close the airlock and head on inside and again we have all the doors for the crew so we can you know pop people in and out and we have all these lovely little aeroponic hydroponic stuff all around and again we can take the ladder up to the second floor where we have some nice proper little crops going and of course can see out of our lovely cupola which is pretty nice overall very cool so let us again head out and go to the last one which is of course the science laboratory and hold on there we go da, 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 da. there's open airlock excellent and open perfect oop falling on our face lovely and excellent let's just go open this one and of course we can also turn on the lights for these things so that you know you do have that let's close didn't mean to go into jebediah's inventory there let us close the airlock excellent and in we go now of course <laughs> In all of these, it is kind of a tight camera view because, well, we are in kind of a tight space. But again, we have in here the crew hatches. We've got sciency bits, tools, and if we get upstairs, we have a lovely little telescope with a star chart for us to observe and, you know, do science with. And that, that is just cool. I really really do like all these interiors. I always love when you can actually walk around with your Kerbals in something. It just makes it that much better. And I love that, of course, we have to do a proper airlock in and out for us to actually enter and exit these things. And of course, the last bit we have here is uh, the, <laughs> the garage, which, oh boy, did I have problems getting this thing over here. And as you can see, I kind of just lazily put these solar panels on top rather than connecting them properly with the Kerbal attachment system. But all in all, a lovely little base. I really, really do love these things. But we, of course, do still have a one more thing to view, and that is the Altair Lander, which I do have waiting on the launch pad so we can just take a quick look at that even though really I think the main thrust of this mod is of course the uh, actual moon base it is still quite nice having the lander as well because well you got to get to the moon base somehow and it just makes sense to take something like this which I probably should have set the stages now we do have an interior view for this one as you can see a pretty basic little cockpit but a useful one nonetheless and of course all of our seats for all of our Kerbals a just fun little thing so let us uh, actually just take off with this thing here there we go the four engines going pretty nicely but if we cut them off decouple and then fire the primary engine there we go and there goes the launch pad perfect perfect but yes that is the capsule corp exploration moon village mod a just awesome set of parts for you to build with whether you need a lander or a whole load of fun base parts either way you are good to go so if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself which i would definitely recommend that you go and do you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual but that's gonna be it for today my friends i hope you have enjoyed and of course that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one